Today we're going to talk about uh, more about triangle congruence proofs. Um, so if we look at this first proof, remember a proof, we have our statement, we have our reason, we always start with our given. And so I'm going to write my given first, AD is parallel to BC. That means something to me, and I'm going to come back to that in a minute, and AD is congruent to CB. Remember that your goal is you want sides congruent and you want angles congruent. That's the way we're able to use side, 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 angle, side, um, and all of our triangle congruence theorems. And so remember our goal. Let's look at our goal. Our goal is to prove that AED is congruent to CEB. And so this is what we're trying to prove is that those two yellow triangles are congruent. I have it highlighted and I wanted to look ahead because um, I wanted to have a direction of where I wanted to go. And there are a lot of triangles in that one picture. So I'm gonna start first with this part of the statement. So that statement, anytime you have lines parallel, you know that it's gonna um, result in angles being congruent. And so AD is parallel to BC. Now, here's the thing. At this point, you have some choices and all of them are valid. Um, one could be, you could say um, that DB is your um, transversal. If that is the case, then you have that ADE is congruent to CBE. Um, you could also uh, that's one option. You could also say um, that AC is your transversal. If you do that, then you have DAE is congruent to BCE. That's another option. So right now, we could, we could use both of those and have this. Okay, so what we could do is we could say, well, since AD is parallel to BC, then we could say that angle... A, D, E is congruent to angle um, C, B, E. And that gives me, um, and then also I could say that angle D, A, E is congruent to B, C, E, B, angle B, C, E. And the reason that I know that is if lines are parallel, which I did know, if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Now, if we do that, if that's the part that we go with, now I have three pieces. So look, remember, we're trying to get three pieces of information. So I have a side congruent to a side that was given. I have an angle congruent to an angle and another angle congruent to another angle. And so what we need to figure out is what order are they in. So let me go over here and choose blue maybe. So I've got uh, D is congruent, that angle at D, if we only look at our yellow, D is congruent to B, we've got A is congruent to C, and then we've got this side, AD is congruent to BC. And so if you look at that in the order, you'll notice that the side is um, tucked away there if we get rid of everything else so that all we see is the pieces that we're talking about. You'll see that that side is tucked in there um, in between those two angles. And so then we can say that triangle AED is congruent to triangle CEB. And we can say that we know that that is true because of angle side angle. Now, I do want to point out that you have another alternative. Um, one of the other options that you have, and one of the things you may have seen straight from the beginning, is you could have said, so let me erase this, because I want to show you that there's another option. You could have also said um, just one of them. Maybe you chose these two lines are parallel and that's your transversal. And so from there, again, we're going to use our given, right? So this leads us to the next statement that angle ADE is congruent to angle uh, CBE. And for the same reason, right, if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Um, but then maybe you didn't notice that you could take your transversal the other way. And what stood glaringly out to you because we've seen it so much is this vertical angle. So then you could have said that angle AED 
is congruent to angle BEC. And you could have said that because vertical angles are congruent. Now, again, we still have our three pieces now. So we've got our angle here in the middle, we've got our angle there, and we've got our side. So once you have your three pieces, you can stop and make sure that they are in the right order that you need them to be in. I have them in an order. I have two angles and a side, so I know I'm good because they'll both work. I just have to decide which theorem to use. So triangle AED is congruent to triangle CEB, and in this case, it's because of angle, angle, side. So again, if we go back and we get rid of all the pieces that we're not using, you'll see we've got that angle E floating out there and angle D is touching side DA. So either one of those theorems would have worked in this particular case, angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, and it all depends on which statements you said prior to that. Okay, now, um, when we first started proofs, we talked about this perpendicular, and it's going to lead us to a certain um, steps that have to come as a result of that. So, always we write our given. So, I'll go ahead and write them in one step. KM is perpendicular to JL, and JM is congruent to LM. Um, we've already got that marked in our picture. JM is congruent to LM. I know all of that because I was told, it was given. Now, this statement here always leads us to this next statement. Remember that the definition of perpendicular is that angle um, M, K, J, and um, angle M, K, L are right angles. That will always be the next step after you have a statement that says perpendicular, okay? Because that is what perpendicular means. They are lines that intersect at right angles. So that is my definition of perpendicular. Now, the question is, do I need this to be an HL proof or do I need this to be a side angle side proof or some other kind of proof? Well, in a lot of cases, what you can do is just go ahead and cover all of it. If they're right angles, two things happen. The angles are congruent. So I'm just going to write both things that happen here, and then you can decide. So that means that angle MKJ is congruent to angle MKL. And that is because all right angles are congruent. And then we'll talk about which one, which piece we didn't need. And then the other thing that can happen because they're right angles is I could say that triangle JKM and triangle um, LKM are right triangles. Let me shortcut that. That should be a T. And that's by the definition of right triangle. Now, again, you didn't necessarily need all of these. You didn't need both of these. Um, you did have to have step two. That always follows when you say perpendicular. Your next statement is that those angles are right angles. Okay, from there, you can say these next two statements, but we'll talk about which ones we need. Now, let's look at what we have. I have um, a side congruent to a side. I have an angle congruent to an angle. Well, I need three pieces, so we go back to the picture and we look and we see what else we know. What, what else we know is that we know that KM is congruent to KM. So we have another side congruent to a side. So the reason we know that is because of the reflexive property. Okay, so now I have three pieces. Let's look at the three pieces I have. I have this side that has a congruent a, a pair. I have this side that has a pair, and I have this side that has a pair. Now, the problem here is that I have two sides and one angle, and that angle is um, not included. So I cannot use side angle side. Okay, so what I'm going to have to do then is I'm going to have to say that... Um, what I'm going to have to use is this one. This is the one that has to stay. I need to know that those are right triangles. Why do I need to know that they're right triangles? 
because the only way that I'm allowed to use HL is if they are right triangles. And so what I now can say, I have to say, um, I've already said they're right triangles. Now I can say that triangle JKM is congruent to triangle LKM because of HL. Because I said they were right triangles, you have to say they're right triangles. In order to use HL, you have to say they're right triangles because only tri right triangles have a hypotenuse. What I didn't have to say is I did not have to say this step three. It doesn't hurt to have it, but it was unnecessary. So once I kind of determined that, okay, SSA isn't going to work, um, but it's a right triangle, right? We can't use SSA. And so the question is then, can I use HL? Yes, I can, which means I need to say those are right triangles. And since they're right triangles, then the triangle it can be congruent by HL. Okay, so you didn't need step three. It doesn't hurt to have it if you're writing your own proof, um, but it wasn't necessary. So let's look at this next proof. So it says um, given, <clears throat> so we're going to write our given statements first, always. AB is congruent to DE. And if it isn't marked in your picture, you're going to want to mark it, which it already is. AB is congruent to DE. And um, angle C is congruent to angle F. Both of those are given. So if you look at what I have so far, remember we need three pieces of information, right? We have a pair of sides, we have a pair of angles. So now I need to look at what else I have. Well, if I look at the picture, um, I'm not gonna use HL, right? I can look at that and I can see BC is the hypotenuse and there are no markings on BC. So I don't really care that this is a right triangle, but I do have to deal with these angles first. <clears throat> so what I do know is I can say that angle A and angle D are right triangles. Okay, angle A and angle D are right, excuse me, they're not right triangles, they're right angles. They're right angles. Angle A and angle D are right angles, okay? That is the definition of right angle. Um, because they're um, 90 degrees, okay? Then I can say um, that angle A is congruent to angle D because all right angles are congruent. Now, see, the reason I had to, I had to state that. I know it seems silly, but I had to state that because I have to have three congruent statements. And once I have my three congruent statements, now I've got my three pieces. So I can go over here and I can check. Well, C is congruent to F, A is congruent to D, and A, B is congruent to ED. And so then I have notice I have two angles and a side. So the question is, is it angle side angle or is it angle angle side? So I can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF and it is because of angle angle side. Again, if you're having problems seeing that, get rid of everything that you didn't need that you weren't using rid of all the extra pieces and you end up with an angle and a side that are touching and an angle that's hanging out. Okay, so in this case I didn't need to say anything about it being a right triangle or anything like that. I just needed to say that those right they were right angles and that they're congruent. All right, so we have JK is congruent to ML and we have angle JKL is congruent to angle MLK. So again, I have a pair of sides that's congruent and a pair of angles that's, a, that's congruent just based off of the given. Um, so I need a third piece of information, so I go back to my picture and I look. Well, what I notice is that these two triangles overlap and they both share KL. So my next statement would be that KL is congruent to KL. And that is the reflexive property. Anytime two triangles share a piece, they are it, you're going to use that reflexive property. Well, now what that gives me is that gives me that third piece. It gives me a side. 
So then you have to look at it and you have to decide, are they in the right order? So let's just isolate it and look at this one triangle right here and let's mark the pieces that we have. So I have this side, JK, matches ML. I have this angle, angle K, the, for that green triangle, JKL, matches MLK. And then I have this side that's shared KL. So I have my two sides and my angle, and notice that my angle is attaching, right? If I connect them right there, it's the bridge that connects both of those two sides. And so I can say that triangle JKL is congruent to triangle MLK because of side angle side. Okay, so um, this next one, B is the midpoint of DC. Anything that isn't marked in the picture needs to be marked. So we're gonna go over here. B is the midpoint. We know this is gonna give me, I'm gonna shorthand that. Um, this is gonna give me important information because what I'm looking for is side congruent to side or angle is congruent to angle. And I don't have any of that in my given. So my givens are gonna have to give me some information. So I'm gonna start here with this one. B is the midpoint of DC. So B is this point right here, is the midpoint of DC, which is this segment. So when I put a midpoint in the middle of a segment, I get two congruent segments. So that means that DB, is congruent to BC. And that's because that's what midpoint means, definition of midpoint. So um, I have a side, so then I look, there's gotta be more information than I need. I'm gonna look at my picture real quick. Here's what I see. I see that AB is congruent to AB. Remember, we wanna get that low hanging fruit, the easy stuff that's easy, um, uh, that's easy to see. So AB is congruent to AB. Um, that's a reflexive property. Okay, and so now I've got these two pieces are congruent. So now I need one other thing. Now I notice it's a right triangle. Your tendency is gonna be to go towards hypotenuse leg, but notice that um, AD is your hypotenuse and there are no markings on your hypotenuse. So we don't need to know that it's a right triangle. We just need um, to know that some other side is congruent. Now we don't know about AD and AC, so we don't have another side, but we may know about an angle. So we look, okay, well, I didn't give you this for no reason, right? AB is perpendicular to DC. AB is perpendicular to DC means that angle ABD and angle ABC are right angles. That's the only thing that that little symbol means is that's the definition of perpendicular. And the definition of perpendicular is lines that intersect at right angles. So right now, all we know is that they, they are right angles. I need those right angles to be the same size so that, because my goal is to be able to use side angle side. So now I would say angle ABD is congruent to angle ABC. Why? Because... Um, all right angles are congruent. If they're right angles, then all right angles are congruent. So now I know that I have my congruent angle. So if I look and I compare, I go up here and I'm like, okay, I've got a side congruent to a side, another side congruent to a side, and the angle right there. The angle is touching both of those orange sides, that blue angle is touching both of those yellow sides, excuse me. And so then what I can say is um, triangle ABD is congruent to triangle ABC. And that's because of side angle side. Again, this is not HL. It's not HL because I don't have the hypotenuse. So when it's HL, you have to say it's a right triangle. If we go back, reminder. If it's HL, I have to say it's a right triangle. If I need the angle to be congruent, then I say they're right angles, and then I say the right angles are congruent. So I use right angles are congruent. When I want the angles to be congruent, I use that they're right triangles when I want to use HL. Okay? And then the last one, RQ is parallel to TS. 
I'm gonna write that down. I know that that is going to result in some congruent angles for me. RQ is parallel to TS and RQ is congruent to TS. So anything that isn't marked, we're gonna go up and mark it in our picture so we can keep up with it. I've got a side congruent to a side and I've got that RQ is congruent to TS. So I've got that right there. I know all of that because I said so. Now, this parallel, right, this is always going to lead me to my next statement. So if I highlight RQ is parallel to TS, then here is my connector. We always want to look for that crisscross angle. So what that tells me is that angle QRT, which is this angle right here, is congruent to angle STR, which is this angle right here. And I know that because if lines are parallel, which we just said they were, if lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. Okay, so then we look, okay, I don't have anything else. I don't have those other angles. I cannot say those other angles are congruent. There are not any other alternate interior angles because the other two lines are not parallel. Even though they look like it, we cannot say that they are. Um, so then your next statement would be, um, we need something else. So I have a side, I have an angle, so I need another angle or I need another side. Well, when I look up here, I notice that that side belongs to both. So RT is congruent to RT. And that is because of the reflexive property. Anytime you have those shared sides, you need the reflexive property. Okay, and so now when you look at what you've got, I have a side congruent to a side, I have another side congruent to a side, and I have an angle. And the angle that I have is in between the two sides. And so now I can say that triangle QRT is congruent to triangle STR because of side, angle, side. So it is important as you go through, write down your givens. You're always looking for sides congruent or angles congruent. And so you're gonna use the pieces of what you've been given, mark them on your picture, and then go from there with your next steps in order to get sides congruent and angles congruent until you have three pieces um, and make sure that they're in the right order so that you can use one of your congruence theorems to prove those